Where's the... This is very low technology. <laughs> hey, that's the idea. Where's the... <laughs> Hi. <gasps> you unplugged the internet. No, I didn't. No. Yes, you did. Oh, but it's okay. I have to move back this one. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. Uh, we should take a photo of this setup. Oh, I'm working on it. Is it okay? Yeah. Yeah. How many are you? Uh, Eight. Two, two, four. I only see two, four, six. Uh, don't move. Don't move. Don't move. <laughs> What's your name? The, the girl with the glasses. The girl oh, with the glasses. Okay, hold Tell on. Again. What's your name? Oh, Helga. Helga, can you move a little bit towards? What's your name? The Basma. girl in the. Say that again. Basma. Basma. Okay, and then I don't see. Uh, two, four. The uh, in the second. Yes. Can you see him in the center? The center. Wow. The, the oh, yeah. What do you what I suggest? What I suggest oh, is that the, the girl <laughs> in the second uh, line with the yeah. white shirt yeah. moves a little bit to the center, and then the girl on the third row with glasses and gray <laughs> moves yes. a little bit forward uh, <laughs> and to the center. To, yeah. Okay, and <laughs> the guy with the gray, the, with the uh, orange gray sh the shirt, if you could sit a little bit higher, because I want to do some fist frames. <laughs> yes. And, and I'm here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, okay, Raul. Okay. Raul, thank you for uh, accepting the invitation. I'm here at 4 in the morning and it's already very hot. Actually, probably I'm going to start peeling with nothing because I cannot use the ventilator. This is really the tropics. Uh, Raul, thank you very much for the invitation to participate in the low tech uh, project at Sachi. My pleasure. It's a thank to you for accepting the, the invitation and for participating in the project. So actually, we have uh, uh, we have Basma and Helga will ask you some questions about your work. Perfect. And then we can start from there talking about what is low technology because we have no idea. <laughs> Do you are you recording there? Sorry, I'm I, I'm very conscious of all the uh, storage and asset management for the final package of the project. Yes, we are. We are recording. We are video recording and voice recording the, the Skype conversation. Great, great, great. Fantastic. Hey, I'm all yours. All right. So we're, we were wondering if you could tell us a little bit about your practice to start with. Okay. Uh, I'm, in, I'm a Colombian artist. I was born in 1948 in Bogota. Uh, I started very young. Uh, I started exhibiting uh, in 1965 when I was. I closed my first exhibition that day I became 17. I was. I don't know how I did it. I was in high school still, uh, in military high school because I was sort of a menace. Uh, <laughs> then I I studied. I did my pre pre graduate. In the national in the national university of Bogota, in the Faculty of Fine Arts, uh, I went to have an exhibition in Washington in 1971, and from there I went to the Netherlands for a three-year master in the Jan van Eyck Academy in Maastricht, and since then I lived there. Um, I began with uh, drawing, collage, montages. Very, uh, very soon I began to do a uh, Super 8, 8 and Super 8 film, and in 1968 I began with video, which is a pretty early. I was very lucky that some collector of my work uh, bought a video machine to do uh, surveys, so, and that the, the American system equipment was manufactured by Sony before it was manufactured to Europe, 
So in fact, when I came to the Netherlands in 1971, the academy had used both, the Yavanek Academy had used both this uh, new machine that I had been using already for three years. Uh, there, there were, at that point, there were three basic uh, six systems in color and two systems in, in black and white. The American six system was called EIA, like Electronic Industries of America, and the uh, French European system is very important to say that it's in color. There is a set a different uh, system uh, for France, France, uh, the Iron Curtain countries, and uh, Africa. So the European French system was called CCA. CCAR. Uh, from working there uh, three years at the Yamanek Academy, uh, I, I came to I went to Amsterdam, sorry, I'm in Cali, uh, where I continue working with video till, till today. Uh, there are some highlights in the world. I did very big installations at the end of the 70s, beginning of the 80s. I did my first Satellite, my first of two satellite projects in 1980 and later 1983. And then I stopped with satellite because it's, it is what it was and still is very difficult until next year when I'm going to be doing a residence in Venice in the Emily Fahavi Foundation. And I will use satellites again, SES. With Simon Ernest Simon, one of the biggest uh, satellite free, uh, fleets in Europe. Uh, I tell you very shortly about it. I will, uh, we will, with the swaps of the satellite, that information will be sent to MIT, and in MIT they will be able to see real time uh, the the underwater, so the flora and fauna of the underwater. I, since 1990, I have my own television program called The Hookstein Life, uh, that is cornerstone of Pierre Biang. Uh, it's a uh, political financial program cable cast for the uh, Amsterdam metropolitan area. Uh, I published a newspaper, a magazine, when I was a student at the Art Academy. Uh, yeah. That's roughly what uh, I can tell you. <laughs> well, that's great. Um, are you still a menace? <laughs> I'm afraid so, at 67. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, but really, uh, what got you involved in technology? Um, I mean, you, you talked about having access to this video camera early on, so I mean, that's a form of video, Wait, 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 video equipment. Yes. <laughs> video equipment. There were no such things as video cameras at that moment. The, the video equipment was a composite of a reel-to-reel -reel recorder, a big, big recorder, a video camera on a tripod, because it was not mobile, and a monitor. So it was a three-unit, uh, very heavy and very expensive uh, piece of equipment. Let me see if I can find. I brought this book, is like the book of video art in the Netherlands, 1930, 1985, and there are pictures of here. Let's see if I can show you. <laughs> <laughs> you see the you see the the recorder there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. That's like a box for moving, and I seen a picture of the camera of that period here. Just to give you an idea of. Mm -hmm. 
Can you see the camera there on the monitor? Yes. <laughs> and here, this is the cover of the, one of the issues of the magazine that I was publishing when as a student in the academy with a fellow uh, Colombian artist who just passed away, Michel Cardena. You see the monitor there. Mm -hmm. But without that, it couldn't work. Wow. Uh, oh, the camera is on top. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the camera is there. But there is a monitor to your left, right? Mm -hmm. or no? <laughs> uh, right, <laughs> to our right. <laughs> to, your, to our right, okay. <laughs> that was basically the equipment. It's important to take into account that this was called industrial video. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely out of the question to uh, even think that that system could be used to, for television and it was despised by television. Actually, uh, in 1978, I did a, a television series called Superman Last Adventure and the actor and myself used to joke that it would never be on television. It was a television series that would never be on television. This, this is, I don't know, will I, no, sorry. <laughs> but, uh, and it's very funny because it has been in PBS in the United States, German television, and now with the low tech uh, event in such in December, it will be broadcast by the BBC. I want to show you another work which is totally, it's called World's First TV Convention, <laughs> where 250 televisions talk to each other for five days without computers. So, uh, it was, uh, yeah. At the time, what was the thickness of the reel that you were working with? Can you say that again? What was the thickness of the reel that you were working with in this? One of my fellow classmates would like to know. How wide like was it? Like 16 the... millimeter or? Oh, what are you talking about? A half inch black and white open reel. Mm. Okay. It is not until. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> uh, it was manufactured by Sony. It is not until 1978, 79 that uh, I begin to work with Umatic. Three quarter inch cassette, uh, and then I work. Then it, it develops fast. Then you have uh, something called BVU, is broadcasting video umatic, and afterwards I worked with. Uh, we think uh, video eight, high eight, uh, and then after that. Uh, I think I go directly into, after high 8, I think I go uh, directly into handheld devices. Uh, in terms of, of capturing, uh, in terms of uh, capturing, in terms of recording, in terms of installations, we were working with, yeah, all sorts of equipment. Mm -hmm. How, it seems like this would be an inaccessible field to start in, especially at that time, how did you gain access to this sort of equipment or what made you want to work with it? Well, in fact, it's all my father's fault. <laughs> my father was a, G, a GP, but he was very much into photography and film. So he used, uh, he had two very good mm -hmm. German cameras, but also he had a, a Eight millimeters film camera. This is very, it's like back on Vogue at this moment, and and Super 8. And then with that, a, a collector of mine in 1968 bought this equipment I just show you mm -hmm. in the United States to take back to Colombia to record surveys. So that situation where there are people, five people of different ages, and then they give them. Uh, Three vase, uh, vases with different, uh, with the same uh, beverage, let's say like uh, cola from Coca Cola, but they would give them Coca Cola, Pepsi Cola, and uh, covered, 
they will drink and say, I like number three. And that was the only um, one of the few uses given to video at that moment, especially in Colombia. In the United States, it was used. Actually, it's a, it's a format developed for uh, training, for technical and corporate training. But it was so expensive that it was used only by the advertising co uh, companies and uh, doctors, drinks for uh, psychotherapy and some academies. When I came to the Netherlands in 71, there were only two art academies in Europe that had that equipment. That was Wuppertal in Germany and uh, my alma mater. Mm. Wow. Okay, so as, as your practice is kind of done, we've seen with your WhatsApp project that you're starting to work with, of course, you've uh, kind of like adapted your practice to work with new coming technologies? I didn't adapt my practice. Technology got adapted for me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you are a menace. <laughs> uh, no, it, it was, it is in fact a question of a choice. You, at that moment, uh, an artist like me had two choices, or to go and work for television that I was not interested in, uh, or to work with this industrial equipment and basically your outlets were very, very little exhibitions mm -hmm. uh, and uh, video festivals, that were video art festivals. They begin, I think, in 1974. There is this Argentinian uh, millionaire collector, he's still alive, uh, Jorge Glusberg. And he, he finances the first uh, video festivals, like in the ICA in London, Spas Cardin in Paris, um, ICC in Antwerp and in other places. And that's the, yeah, that, those are the, the big festivals. And it's not, I mean, today is very funny because if you're in an art fair, anywhere like 60, 70 percent of the galleries are uh, using video. There was a time that when you said the word video in front of uh, art, in front of an uh, art uh, dealer or something, they would go like, no, because it was really impossible to handle, uh, to, uh, to, to package, to use very commercial terms, to, to sell, distribute, etc. Okay. Um. So how, I guess, it seems very, it seems very unlikely that you would have be, become a video artist, but you've kind of allowed your practice to stay responsive to technology as it develops, uh, whether it adapts around you or you adapt around it. That was a joke. Though. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but how do you stay kind of up to date? How do you keep your practice uh, evolving? In that you have to thank the Netherlands very much because in the Netherlands they were, there were there was a, a social security for artists that I never had. I come from a very liberal background. I'm I'm extreme left, but I come from a very liberal, uh, liberal background. So I always thought I'm not coming to Europe to get social benefits, but uh, the government offered grants. And subsidies for all sorts of works. Uh, I am. Uh, I was the most expensive student when I came to Yavanek in Maastricht. They, I think, they saw all oh, these people come from South America and the developed countries. Uh, actually, the two Colombians that were there, they were the only city people, and they made a big mistake. And is that they, when I asked the financial director, how is the money situation here? And he said to me, ah, with us is unlimited expenses. So I was the most expensive student in the history of the academy <laughs> till today. And in terms of grants, uh, there is only uh, grants from the government, uh, from the national, local and regional government. I think the only one that has been more expensive than me is Marina Abramovich. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So, Those projects like the satellite link, 
and the world's first TV convention were very, very expensive. I would never do it again. Mm -hmm. uh, so in that way, I was able to work, uh, survive uh, comfortably. I never taught. I never. I, I have lectured and did, do these kind of workshops, but I never uh, taught and. Uh, I never had to have a, have a job, and then in, in the 80s I decided to stop with that and concentrate in working uh, in the gallery circuit. And I've been very, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a super rich or expensive artist, but I have been able to live from my work. That's incredible. Um, so, with with the work that you're doing now, do you think that it's it's responsive to technology in the same way that you were kind of being very responsive to back in the 80s? Mm. I, it's very different now. Uh, I was talking yesterday, I did a, a, a lecture yesterday in the uh, Jesuit University of Colombia in the, in, here in, in Cali, there, uh, three or four of them, and then uh, I was talking, first was like a matter of choice, but uh, on the other hand, uh, yeah, it is very, uh, it was also the times, I, I mean, the 70s were very experimental, 70s and 80s in my case, but also historically in Europe and the United States, and the 90s, also, the changes of the, in technology, uh, the, ch the changes in technology play a very important role because. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> what? 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 You disappeared. <laughs> what? <Stop. laughs> what? <laughs> so true. tell me, tell me, Helga, what is, what is it? Well, you just disappeared on us. So <laughs> oh, I disappeared because I, I was gay. I, I was reaching for some matches. Mm. Okay, <laughs> that's forgivable. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, could okay. you. Could you talk to us a little bit about your project inside the city? Digital influences on the public space. Uh, it has been a very. Uh, did you see it? No. That's why I'd like for you to tell me about it. No, but why, why, don't you, why don't you get it? Does anyone have a device there, like uh, online? It doesn't matter what. Actually, it's conceived. Can you? Uh, oh, get on God, computer? she's going to put a sweat. Uh, a jacket? A I know, it's not. I'm we're not in Colombia. <laughs> <laughs> Here is very, well, it's not that hot, but it has been very hot days and here, very soon I'm going to have to take this shirt off. Can you, can you go into the, into the project? Uh, yeah, we're, we're someone doing, is, doing someone's it. pulling it up on the computer right now. I gotta, I'm going to write it down for you. Okay. It's on your way. I have, uh, there is no, I have okay, someone, okay. you've created Quidister, everyone's going to try. It's only four well, actually, that's the idea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's the idea of how we have been, have been showing it. Although, I must tell you that the museum doesn't understand. They invited me, and they don't understand a word of it. That's very uh, funny. Uh, well, that seems... I, I, maybe I'm wrong, but it seems like that might be a funny part of your practice. That calm. This this is a museum that collects uh, experimental paperwork art from the uh, well they collect many things but the, their core uh, their main aim is paper paperwork from the fifties sixties and seventies they collect like newspapers magazines multiples etc etc. Mm -hmm. And then they invited me to uh, actually sort of design some sort of posters from those uh, sig for those signal 
signals, uh, sort of things that uh, you have, like in train stations, those boards that move, etc., etc. So I said, no, no, come on, guys, I don't do windows. <laughs> uh, see, I, mean, I, don't, I don't design posters. It's not a question of uh, what you like or don't, or don't like, but basically, I was in uh, So I proposed, I say, okay, I'll do that, but I'll do it in Google. Although I work with, I work with technology, I'm very bad with it. <laughs> I always, seriously, I always depend on uh, other young people, things like that. So I, I bluff and I say what I want to do is to sort of copy the kiosks that you have in Paris, where the, the newspaper, mm -hmm. where you see the, the Madison covers in the front pages. I think they are entrance into the sewer. And they are in the shape like of a rocket, mm -hmm. and they move from place to place, mm -hmm. from uh, from left to right with the, with Le Monde, uh, Liberation, etc., etc. So I say we'll do this. Mm -hmm. uh, this is my proposal, and then they say yes. I had no idea what I was talking about. I talked with one of my main nerds, and he told me, "Oh, it's, <laughs> it's okay. We will use." Uh, cannibalize the Google sites of IKEA. You know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about? The big sh the shop. Yes. yes. Oh, yes. Uh, I will. Uh, 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 we will can, but we have to write code. My legs went into jelly. <laughs> oh my God! What am I doing? And then, uh, yeah, I call one of my nephews in Bogota. And he has a company with domotics, mm -hmm. like dom domestic, uh, you know, like with solar panels and the communications between the washing machine and the dryer and the whatever. So I told him, this is what we're doing, please help me. And then he said, no, that's a piece of cake. You just have to use my map. You know what they are, what, what there is? Yes. Mm. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> It's very easy. Who said yes? The nerd. Why don't you Why don't you explain them what it is? My maps. Probably you know much better than me. <laughs> <laughs> He's the IT guy, so yeah. he knows everything. It's, uh, you make your own Google Maps, and you can pin put pins and pathways and things. Oh, it's just like what you do for your map. restaurants. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. But you do it to okay. share with people, so like he's making his own map. Yeah. Okay. Yes. We now know. We're all experts. Just like great. <laughs> So, uh, he said, we have to do this, and then this kid in Antwerp, my nephew, and uh, another guy in Amsterdam set up the thing. I mean, it's, it's nothing. He's a user, it's basically a, a user platform for holidays. And, and based on that, we, we have the we have dailies and weeklies. What is very funny about it is that when we were developing that one time, they say, can we, from the museum, can we have a, a talk about it? I said, sure. And then the youngest curator of the team said to me, I think we think it's very interesting, but we don't understand a word of it. But, oh, God. <laughs> so I tried to explain again, uh, and they, their, I think I have it here, their answer, they said, no, oh, fantastic, we'll print a postcard for you. Actually, I'm flying blind here because I put that text and I don't know how to get rid of it. Oh. Uh, yes, I did. Congratulations. So they, they just print a postcard. You know, which is totally, uh, well, the opening came, and that's very, very interesting. Uh, they were talking, yeah, the engagement of the Alpines and everything. I said, listen, I don't give a damn about that. I do the work for myself. If people want to see it, fine. If they don't want to see it, uh, okay. But through our uh, social media network, or the social media network of 
of the hook stain, the cornerstone, the television program, I'm sure things are going to work, and they indeed this. The, uh, so what the museum did was something very museum-like in the auditorium with tables, with devices, tablets and computers where you could sit and do what, uh, what you can do, check the news, national and international, and then what you see, what the, the person, the user was seeing in one of the devices was displayed in a big screen, which was sort of, yeah, uh, not really, a, not really necessary. If you see it in the device, why do you have to display it in a big screen? Mm -hmm. uh, 48 hours after the opening, the team I'm working with included two more units. So they had to redesign the whole big video wall. Mm -hmm. What was very interesting there is that students from the Art Academy, the communication and the communication, the museum didn't understand, but the students of the communication department of the university, the Art Academy, and the communication department of the city, of the city authority, they did. So the students came with the, with their own devices and start approaching uh, guests at the opening and engaging them and saying one to one or one to few. Uh, that they say, look, this is the project that showing it there, or telling people go go in your iPhone or your smartphone and enter here and you will. Uh, you know, you're, it became a handheld device piece, and that, that for me was and is very interesting. The, the downside of the story is that the museum became, I don't understand really the, the politics, but the museum was not happy with the involvement of the, of the other institutions. And it's still a problem today. We are, I'm, every day I'm talking to them, the other thing that happened is that without knowing anything about it, I say, well, what would be very interesting is that one could uh, interact with the, the digital signals that is in the, throughout the city. Do you know what the di digital signals is? Does anyone know? No, you've stumped us. It's... Um, Information and digital information and advertisement in those boards. You have it like in train stations in airports. So it's basically the same kiosk that is paper but is digital. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. These guys do, not me. Observe next time you're walking around Paris. I will. <laughs> there, is a, there is a lot around. <laughs> and I said it would be nice if people could interact uh, with these devices, uh, with their own devices, with these uh, units, the digital signal unit. And then a an Slovenian company uh, react to it and then uh, uh, said, yeah, they developed something called iLink and that's for police, highway police, that they can, from their own devices, change the information in the big boards on the highway if there is an accident or a roadblock, etc., etc. So they say, we offer you a prototype, but the museum has been very reluctant uh, because it's true. The, it's like the media department of the city of uh, Bremen. They have been very reluctant, and we are already in September, the exhibition is today. 12th of October, I think, something like that. So I don't know if it's gonna it's gonna happen. But I'm very happy. I'm very happy that until now has been working perfectly. We didn't have any technical problem. Uh, this is still uh, the 11th of October. So I don't think it's gonna work. It's really a pity because. Uh, it's a great opportunity, and it's, it's a prototype. They, they, they use it in Australia at the moment. Uh, but what they, they gave us a, a 
customized prototype for, for days and weeks, and we haven't been able to, to do anything. But in terms of engagement of one, one to one or one to few, uh, I have a piece I did in Paris in 2011 or something, and I want to try to find it here. It was a live event in front. Well, one. Do, do you know a television series called Inspector Poirot? Yes. Yes. Well, in one of the episodes, Poirot flies to uh, flies to Paris to to interview a suspect, and the set, uh, the location is a cafe called Café La Palette in Rue de Saint. And it's across the street for the, from the gallery that represents me. So I, this is perfect. I'm going to do, I'm going to show that fragment of Poirot in front, uh, uh, where he's drinking tea with this woman in, in Café La Palette, in front of a, uh, I'm going to show that fragment in front of Café La Palette with a very limited audience. Uh, I was playing with the that line that you hear uh, in American television that is this episode was recorded in front of a live studio audience so it was a very short event I'm going to show it to you if I can let me see mm -hmm. yes there it is you can see that <laughs> Yes, it's Okay, so basically, it's a fragment of Poirot and his suspect sitting in Café La Palette, displayed in front of Café La Palette with nine people behind, nine guests only, and then we went and had a drink there. <laughs> so I'm showing you uh, uh, this piece because it's sort of the engagement of one-to-one -one or one-to-few comes back in uh, days and weeks. Mm -hmm. And this is from 2011 or something like that, I don't know. So, yeah, no. you guys have to give me five minutes, I have to go to the kitchen. I'm in a restaurant now, great room. <clears throat> I need some water. Okay. I need a glass of water. Excuse me one second. <clears throat> So that's a very his funny piece. Uh, he's got many galleries. Mm -hmm. so here, uh, let me see. You can ask him. But here. So the lower resolution thing is in there. Yeah. His gallery. Mm -hmm. This is very funny. It should be here. Somewhere. Mm -hmm. 
Welcome back. <laughs> um, okay, so we've we've uh, got a question for you. We're wondering about your relationship with low technology. We understand um, you have access to all of this. Uh, we were just hearing that you, you're working with a drone project. So it's kind of interesting that you're choosing to play with low technology. Is this related to the one-to-one -one connection that you were just discussing? Well, I believe that um, low, te low technology allows you to develop your own language your own audiovisual uh, vocabulary uh, and it's a challenge. What, what I did just now with you by showing you the thing like this yes. for me is far more interesting and challenging than uh, sending a, a second feed uh, to another channel in a very expensive satellite link situation. I'm far more interested in, what we're, in how we're doing it now. Uh, also, because I'm a visual artist, so what I call optical transfers, that is what we just did, mm -hmm. do show putting something in front of a lens and start of... Uh, actually, actually, it comes actually it comes from a uh, financial uh, situation. The transcoding of video in the 70s. If I wanted to show my video in the United States and I was working in Europe, it was, I think, the equivalent of 50, 60 euros per minute to transcode the tape. Well, if you put a camera in front of a screen that was displaying a European uh, PAL or second video and you record it with NTSC, yeah, you lost a little bit of quality, but you were saving money. And at the same time, it gave you, for me, a very interesting gra graphic uh, uh, flavor, you know, like a little bit grainy. Mm -hmm. So I've been exploiting that for the last uh, 40, 40 years. And uh, when we had to transcode or, or go from one system to another. Uh, this guy, this American guy, who used to live in Paris for a long time, by the way, he just passed away two years ago, he was the one who showed me the trick of recording video with a camera and by putting it in the right angle and um, uh, sometimes coloring like, like with a white, uh, black piece of cloth gave, you know, solve the, the, the money problem, point number one, very important, mm -hmm. but also gave a little bit of a flavor that I've been indulging for all these years. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. It seems like a very political choice. In a way it is, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, is it, uh, I prefer that my work is political uh, without me playing a political role or trying to be uh, political. Mm -hmm. But yes, and uh, uh, the, results, it, uh, the results are there also in terms of my television program. My television program, uh, the Netherlands is a very equalitarian society, so the Prime Minister the prime, there have been three prime ministers in the television program. It's life. It used to be 12 hours long. My troops have age, so now it's only four hours long. One time, you know, they get married, they get kids. Actually, I have kids. Too, but, um, and one of the 
not one with the signature of the program, it was that it was done in low tech. There is a fantastic picture that I don't have with me when the leader of the Liberal Party, I don't know, like the Sarkozy Party, uh, is in the program and there is a Japanese television crew record doing a, uh, a program about us. So you see these Japanese guys with, you know, ikigami, tan, 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 but actually the program is being uh, transmitted with one camera, one eight camera, video eight camera, uh, put on a bar stool that they didn't even have a tripod, so it was theirs, that there on a bar stool. Well, they were recording with, you know, very expensive professional cameras. It's a question of chokes, but it has become a question of, I don't like to use the word style, and a question of the development of an audio, audio, audiovisual language. So I, I'm very uh, daring with that. I really don't care too much about the quality now with the drums that we will be using during um, the low-tech chapter in Bogota at the Barco Art Fair. I really we capture with the drone, but uh, the pilot has an iPhone, and then we use transmit. Basically, someone else captures with an iPad or an iPhone, and that's like we did with the bottle. Uh, there are two two devices in Pueblo. One of them is a recording and the uh, capturing, and the other one is streaming. So we will be working in the same way uh, with the drones. Okay, that sounds Next. very interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, but we see how it's going to go. We have a lot of uh, complications. We are not allowed to fly within one one point eight kilometers radio from the presidential palace in Bogota, mm -hmm. and uh, the fare is within that range. So most probably we would have to uh, have the drone somewhere else, which is great because probably we will go to a farm in Los Llanos. It's the plains, the cattle. It's the plains before the Amazonas jungle in Colombia and Venezuela. So one of the options is to do it from the ranch of a cousin of mine. He has wires there. Uh, <laughs> That, that will give a totally different... Uh, Klaus knows the area that I'm talking about, very primitive area. Mm -hmm. um, so it would be very interesting to have that during the fair, but also uh, during the transmission. Um, I'm just getting some questions asked through me. I'll channel them to you. Sure. Um, what uh, we're just wanting to know a little bit more about the drone project. What like what kind of technology are you using outside of the and the theme behind it? So what will you be broadcasting? We will be streaming, yes, and sometimes we will broadcast cablecasts in Amsterdam. What Not permanently, but uh, all everything that we will be doing. Actually, uh, there were there were so many. Uh, you know, this for this, this we should be streaming. What we're doing now should have been streamed live. I, we just didn't have the time. And I hope that next time we can do it. Uh, actually, we could do it now. Let's do it now. You can use Periscope. Do you want to use Periscope or? With live stream or something. Uh, uh, yeah, I well, I do have, yeah, I do have a TV channel that I could set up, but you know, the one we use for the PC. I think it would be very interesting in in the future, in the future. Uh, encounters with you to stream live and <coughs> also announce it what we do as we are announcing it in advance via Twitter yeah. and um, okay. Facebook and mm -hmm. LinkedIn and Google Plus uh, a few days in advance and yeah I couldn't the guy the guy who I'm working with, I couldn't ask him to, to sleep here and wake up at 4 <laughs> in the morning, which I think is great. 
Yes. Like this time change is really a challenge for me. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I woke up, uh, my daughter, she's staying in a hotel nearby me. She's with some friends who just visiting Cali. So she set my alarm clock in one of my telephones. And I was having some drinks with some of the students till about 12.30 or something like that. And I think it's great that we, we wake up and I like the whole time difference thing. It's very challenging, the, yes. whole, the whole situation. Challenging and but very funny. I think, say that again? Challenging and funny. Yeah, but I think that we should make an effort to um, to uh, uh, to stream also, not only to ca capture and stream, but to stream and also what we should do in the future is to have uh, someone to have the chat if we announce it, uh, to have someone moderating the chat that people are reacting, uh, that the viewers of the stream react, and that we we that someone moderates that chat, and that someone and and that that chat is included included in the exercise. Yes, we all agree. I think yes, this we, is a we great all idea. have actually Raúl. We all have that technology already here at school. Because we use it for the conference program we have, the PCA talks. So for the for the next uh, yeah. meeting that you have is really because we have to see this uses chapter one of what's going to happen in London. Okay. And and then um, the next the next actually the next session on Skype is going to be with Alejandro Duque. He's fantastic. Yeah, you the one who recommended. Yeah, recommended. He's fantastic because he's very resourceful. And he's much more knowledgeable than me in terms of, of technology. Uh, he's very good. And then David Garcia, he's my age. Uh, we did together many projects, among them artists talking back to the media. If you can check that in the in internet, because it was realized 30 years ago. But uh, a, there was a big exhibition in a place called the Apple in Amsterdam. And it's going to be... A, a, a touring exhibition in the Americas is going to be here in Colombia, like in three cities, going to Sao Paulo, then Miami, New York, Canada. And that guy knows a lot. He maybe if you make a note of that, the project is called Artists Talking Back to the Media. But he did another very interesting project that is in the late 90s that is called The Next Five Minutes. And it deals with the technology was surfacing in the in the nineties, the communication technology, but also activism, how it influenced activism, etc., etc. That uh, is there's going to be a big exhibition in Amsterdam and in London. Mm. It's a, it's a very uh, it's a very interesting project. It was from the two of us. He, and I don't know whether I have a catalog, but I don't know where now. And he, he has a different view, much more uh, in, in touching more the activist side than, the, than, the, than my work. And all of this is going to be a, a second, uh, you know, like a, a pro, uh, a first course of what's going to happen in London. Actually, one of the reasons I'm doing it also is because I want Philippa Adams, the director of Sachi, she's going to be here during the fair, to see what uh, what the project, what, what she's getting into, especially after what happened with Bremen. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they really understand uh, what's going to happen in London mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Um, could uh, could you answer a question for us? We we really want to know if you could define low technology for us. Well, that, nowadays it's very it's very difficult because uh, user technology it it has turned from industrial technology. Well, let me say first that. Me personally, I really enjoy to use 
obsolete technology. I still use it a lot. Mm -hmm. I still use things like a slow scan, which is like a very primitive fax from the 1970s. It's the first technology, probably is from the 50s or, or even earlier. It's a, a machine that you connect to an analog uh, telephone line and then a camera and they know. There is a camera that captures a frame every few seconds. That, uh, that information goes into a machine called the robot and then from there it is transformed into audio and it's sent, it's like, like the sound of a fax, probably you, you don't know what a fax is. Right? I do. <laughs> that brrr sound, and that's received at another end, at the other end, and with the same machine, the transformers, it transforms it into, mm -hmm. into image again. It's free, it's our freeze frames, there is no motion. Mm -hmm. And I still use that technology in my work. In, like in exhibitions, uh, but also in workshops and things like that. So I think that uh, using obsolete technology and repurposing, that's also something that interests me very much, uh, is part of that language of low tech. Now, how to define low tech is the, basically the opposite of the high tech. Uh, until yesterday, we were participating with the television program in Amsterdam, something called IBC. We've been covering it for about 18 years or something like that, which is the biggest trade fair of the world, next to something that takes place in Las Vegas. It's where you, as a software developer or a manufacturer, get your client and say, listen, I sell you this for two million less, but let's sign the contract. In other words, is the belly of the beast. It's six, six, six. It's Microsoft. It's the very big guys, and we always cover it with very simple devices. We we still do it with telephones, but we did it already like five or six years ago with these Nokia devices that were like the transformers. I don't remember the model, and you know, it is, it is sort of like confronts this whole situation where you see the latest of the latest and the coverage is done and we deliver because it is what well, these days is stream live years ago we used to record we sent our uh, content uh, through bluetooth there it was assembled and it was put in cable television and then we rerun those show reels to the night in local television. So it, it was very funny because you came, you were one of the exhibitors, you came to the hotel, you switched local television, there you were. Uh, we still do it with a totally different technology. I remember one time the second guy of IBM was interviewed, everything collapsed. So we had the only connection we had was in this car that had a link up, very primitive link up, with uh, one of those microphones that used to be attached next to the computer, like a long, you know, sort mm -hmm. of thing. Uh, the, first, the first microphones attached to a computer, and then we interviewed this, you know, second guy of IBM. Uh, he, he, he took it really good. He said, yeah, we all, we develop all of these. You know, and uh, yeah, I think that's what law technology is. I believe that uh, you can, you shouldn't let yourself be intimidated by the uh, by the high tech and the uh, you know the power of high tech. I have learned through twenty five years of local television that yes, as a user, I can do television. And I have a word in the political arena, in the economical arena. And we still today do, uh, if I'm in London, I get my banker friends, bang, gold point, 
and we interview them live and that is stream and that actually the cable it plays less and less uh, of a definitive role in the television program. It's the stream is what is really important. Mm -hmm. And for the last three or four months we are working with ephemeral platforms like Snapchat mm -hmm. that also has a very political angle. Uh, is the is the tool that was used during the demonstrations in Hong Kong when Twitter and everything was blocked. Snapchat became the the way to get the message out. Mm -hmm. And we have another that I mentioned that during the world this world conference in Seattle with big demonstration against globalization and everything, we were the only ones broadcasting in the world. We were getting the image, the the content or the information, video, live from this uh, uh, center that was surrounded by police and then in a certain moment police storm and everything and we had it live. Mm -hmm. So in a way the use of low tech allows you to give a different view and it's not my main goal but I cannot deny it, it's a way to deal with the whole situation of information, disinformation and no information. For me it's even the most uh, compl complex situation, you know, like those, those three angles about what the, the things we get. A few months ago there was a big demonstra peace demonstration in Colombia, in Bogota organized by the left-wing uh, mayor and the, the Colombian media didn't even mention anything. We were the only ones who were getting and transmitting information from mobile devices from our, our friends that were taking part in the demonstration. Mm, that's amazing. Yeah. So, is with regard to the show at Saatchi, where the theme is low technology, but could you yes. could you speak more to what's going to be happening during that show specifically? It's up to us. We don't know. I mean, <laughs> I'm serious. Huh? I'm yes. not being latte or anything. But things change every five seconds. Of course. The, this this encounter already gives a, a whole new different perspective of how to deal with Sachi and and when we are there. It's going to be totally different, like it is right now, with what we are doing with Low Tech Bogota. There are lots of people that are involved that I had never planned to do that. There is this architect, Simon Vélez, who is a Low Tech architect. He, uh, he builds only with bamboo uh, structures and things, and then he's one of the ones who's going to participate. Mm -hmm developing a very small bridge in his house when his compound is a gigantic place and that was not planned at all so we and I'm very afraid of how Sachi is going to deal with that you know because they are a very museum mm -hmm. they're called Sachi gallery but they are not a gallery they are they're a museum mm -hmm. so uh, from here to December there's a long time it's and a long time next. and a short time. Excuse me? It's a long time and a short time. I think that many things are going to change. Mm -hmm. uh, this, what we're doing now, what we start doing now is, and I thought I was prepared for it, it's really an eye-opener of how prepared we have to be mm -hmm. to improvise and to incorporate millions of, and that's the challenge, you know, mm -hmm. for me to do a, an event uh, that is totally planned. You have to have some structure, but for me, to do an event that is totally planned, it's not, you know, it's not the ideal. One of the things that have happened, and I discovered a few hours ago, it is, is that I sent Klaus information like five times in the past 48 hours. Mm -hmm. And I discovered a few hours ago 
the computer that I was using was not sending the messages. Mm. So, if we would have been very strict and rigid about it, we wouldn't be talking now. Mm. So you have to be able to to change and to adapt constantly. So, Raul, do you reckon that we should fo probably focus on the process of how we could achieve or think law, technology, and communications for Sachi? I mean, we're not going to have a final piece or ready in mind or in an installation, but we could, little by little, keep building up a process maybe or a way of, uh, a protocol of how law technology could work? Uh, maybe I improvise, so. yeah. I think we should concentrate a lot in the process. No, I'm not saying that, that we shouldn't document, and as you have noticed, I'm continuing, yeah, we should be streaming this, uh, let's record, etc., uh, etc. Et but at the other hand, I think it's very important to be open and, uh, and incorporate everything that comes along that is in that way. And if we have that attitude, is going to be, uh, we're going to reach far, I'm sure. Because we'll see we, how such is going to do the whole thing. <laughs> because we have two important steps coming up soon. We have uh, the Barku Art Fair in two weeks time. Uh, the, the At the end of the month, the, Arcu, the, the Barku, yeah, Barku Art Fair. Barku and Barku, yeah. actually it's like three fairs. Yeah, but That's the one, the one we are participating the, in. The producer of Barku, that girl, is going to end up killing me. Because, you know, the, the, poor, the poor girl has to deal with everything, you know, the, all the logistics and everything. So she wants to have a sketch and say, no, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, and probably she thinks I'm arrogant or something, but it is the reality. And... Uh, it was not my idea to be in Barku, it was the idea of my galleries, the organizer of Barku. And I'm not going to change the, the, the infrastructure, whatever the infrastructure is, uh, for the sake of a fair or for the sake of a program, you know. So I want to work from three different locations. Then, yeah, but we, I don't have a permission to use this. And then we don't have a public. You know, and I'm very serious about it, and I'm not going to make concessions. We don't have a public now. It is uh, uh, quarter to six in the morning here. We're here from 4.30. We don't have a public. I don't even have that. We are your public. <laughs> yeah. yeah no, exactly. But, you know, all those strokes. No, no, you are, you are not my public. We're doing it together. Uh, so, yeah, we, uh, you're, you're right, Klaus, this has to be uh, very much uh, into the process, and that doesn't mean that uh, we are going to, we'll, we'll have a, I, I hate to use that word, but I don't have anyone at this point, we're going to have a product, we are talking about uh, doing a final publication, with some people here and in Amsterdam, connected with the show of artists talking back to the media. Uh, but fine, great. I think it should be a part of it. But on the other hand, I don't. I think that we should not let ourselves be limited, but by any of the infrastructures or any of the. It is a lot. Basically, it's a lot for me and what what we are doing now where we starting now in Bogota has made it very clear this is this is not a show this is not a, a festival no this is a lot mm -hmm. uh, and that that protects you from uh, all those infrastructures of fairs of uh, museums and, and I, I'm not you know they are not the enemy but we, and by we, I mean you and I and all the other people that are involved in the project, we have to be uh, zero tolerance. This is what we are doing. This is what you, what you see is what you get. It is too late to change that attitude. Uh, this is what we are doing. I don't think there is going to be any problem with Sachi. Uh, the director is really very interested in 
But yes, we have to be very uh, aware that the process at this moment is the most important thing. If our, afterwards we're going to do a television program that shows the recordings of everything that has happened in Law Tech in Bogota and in, in London, great, if we do a publication. But at, at this moment, my main goal is this is what we need, this is where we have to be. Okay, so we th we're just, I will send you an email uh, with all the information we talked about with the, with the group here about the, the conference for Barku, the art fair. Great. We're going to divide in three groups, so one group goes on Thursday, the other one on Friday, and the other one on Saturday. Great. And then we will stream you, uh, we'll stream the material. We work with, um, actually, what I would like to ask you is to think of, in terms of a stream, for instance, if we could do three simultaneous streams, that's what we're going to do here. We're going to be working with live stream, yeah. Periscope, that is very interesting, it's rather new, as you know, and YouTube live. So if you could do the same, and then we have to talk about how to deal with social media in the pre-production stages. But do, do you do you mean that for us the platform that we should use should be live stream, Periscope, or YouTube? Live? If you can, if you cannot, then no, no, we will do it at this end. We can use one of but them. it's very easy. I mean, yeah. it's it's use three three okay. smartphones. Yeah, uh, what are you you what are you using now? Where where are you capturing in uh, at the moment? Uh, here actually it's very low tech actually we're getting we, your voice actually our conversation is being recorded by a voice recorder yes. and the uh, the image actually is being recorded by uh, being recorded by uh, QuickTime we're just Perfect. yeah that's what we're doing and we fantastic. have a webcam yeah to get a high quality image fantastic and then we could use uh, we have an, well the school has an account on i uh, stream TV. But the problem okay. is, if yes, we don't have a, but it's not a professional right. account. So actually, the viewers get uh, commercials every ten minutes. Advertising, actually, you get advertising every ten minutes. I used to use advertisement used uh, in, to give the idea of television, like in, mm -hmm. in the Superman Last Adventure and things like that. I use American advertisement every eight minutes or. So. Like, like they do in, uh, in television shows, so, I mean, we have advertisement, yes, you know. We don't have to, we don't have to be afraid of it. Yeah, to be part of the project, yeah? Yes, exactly, exactly. All right. So do you have questions behind? Or yeah. Or, yeah. I do, Raul, I do have a question. Uh, my name is Claire. Hi, <laughs> Claire. Um, I, and I don't know how familiar you were speaking a little bit to the Digital Week um, and the groups that we're breaking off in. Um, and I didn't know if you had a vision for that as well. Well, for the barco, the, the barco. I, I, I couldn't understand I, I what was, you... Um, I was asking, I didn't know if you have a vision for the... Um, the content? For the, the content for the Digital Week uh, when the... we're breaking off into groups. And it's it's thirty minutes for three people with the translation. So is the idea kind of a five minute presentation of you individually as an artist, or if you had a specific kind of vision for that? I think that that format, uh, what you're describing, is it's perfect. If if it's gonna work in the real world. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, once again, I think it's important to be flexible and uh, once again, I'm very interested in the uh, online audience and to engage the online audience. And I think that uh, the farther that we go, that we will develop uh, a bigger audience, and a bigger special interest audience. But you we did. don't want stupid people, guys. Being <laughs> real, right? 
But what do you reckon about the content? They should be talking about their work, or they should. I think be doing you should some... talk about the, the work and your take in in low tech user technology. Actually, I have to confess that the word low tech is becoming a bit obsolete because it's more user technology. Mm -hmm. uh, low tech is only when you go back and uh, go back into obsolete and. Um, and repurposing. I was amazed we were at this farm, subtropical uh, Colombia, and my wife was making pictures of butterflies. She has the newest uh, iPhone, and wow, the quality was fantastic. So that's not low tech anymore. You know, it's. Uh, but yes, Claire, I think that. That 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 take that presentation and that take on law technology is very important. Okay, well, Raúl, I think we should let you go to for general breakfast, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm gonna go back to bed, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and then just one more thing: you mentioned something when we spoke last last week that you might probably come to Paris to see us. Yes, yes, I I want to go to Paris. Um, I, have, I want to do some works, first of all. Uh, luckily, my wife is in fashion, so she's very often in Paris. So I can hitch a ride to a hotel for free. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, great, you know. And uh, she's in Paris, actually, at the moment. I hope uh, Klaus can see her. Yeah, she was here with me. Uh, she's in Paris in some fair. So, yes, I want to go to Paris uh, before Sachi. So we can get together and you know continue developing. For me, it's, it's all about developing at this moment, uh, and probably until and until the very last moment. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Raúl. Yeah, no you. thanks to you guys. Take thank care. You. Bye bye. Bye. Sleep well. Thanks. <laughs>